Well, hey, everybody. Uh, hope you're doing well today and staying healthy. And I'm excited today to bring to you our first episode of Activate 605, uh, where we're talking really in this time about ways that we can mobilize followers of Jesus to be the church, uh, especially in a season of our society where uh, we're doing things like social distancing and quarantine and all of those kinds of things. So over the next several weeks, we're going to be having conversations with uh, Christian leaders and people uh, that, that we've had the opportunities to connect with to hear from them about different topics about how we can be used by God uh, to be the church in this time. And so today I'm excited to welcome with us Pastor Russ Michael. Uh, Russ Michaels, he is a uh, church planner, founding pastor of Connect Church in Bozeman, Montana. I know they have a location in Great Falls as well. He's a ministry coach and mentor for me. And if all of that's not enough for you, he's got a pretty great beard too. Uh, welcome, <laughs> Pastor Russ. It's good to have you with us today. Thank you, Jake. It's good. It's good to do this. This is going to be cool. This is going to be fun. Uh, so today our topic is really uh, talking about the importance of Christian community and intentionally investing into relationships as a part of uh, being a, a faithful follower of Jesus. So before we jump into that, Pastor Russ, uh, could you just get us a chance to know you a little bit better, know a little bit about you and about Connect Church and what you guys are doing there and what you're all about? Sure. Well, uh, my wife and I and a small team uh, planted Connect Church 12 years ago in Bozeman, Montana, and uh, we, we had a very high priority on building relationships. So uh, developing authentic community is one of our core values. Our hope is that people will develop friendships that will last a lifetime, and we're really seeing that play out in some significant ways. So it's been a great journey. And uh, I'm married to my wife, Chris. She's a histotechnologist. You can Google that. Working in <laughs> healthcare. Have to spell that for us. <laughs> <laughs> Histo, H I S T O, technologist. That's what she does. Working in the hospital in the field of pathology. So she's actually on the front lines of everything that's happening with the coronavirus here in Bozeman. So our life is kind of adventurous right now. And then we also have a daughter, Nikki, who is a student at Montana State University right now, living at home. And uh, life is good. We love Bozeman. We love Montana. Awesome. Well, uh, hey, it's so good to have you here with us today. Um, and I can just say, you know, you said uh, relationships are a core value for you as a church. Uh, I can just tell those of you who are listening and watching this today, uh, it's completely obvious when you get a chance to get to know Pastor Russ that that's not just something they talk about, but it is very important to them. My wife and I can speak to this personally, not just because of the monthly conversations or so that I have with Pastor Russ to talk about life and ministry, but uh, when we were in Bozeman at one point, he invited us to be a part of a life group uh, that they had uh, just for the day that we were there. And you could tell just walking into that place that that those relationships are just such an important thing to them. So uh, Pastor Russ, today, as we uh, jump into this topic, can you tell us a little bit about why you think uh, relationships are such an important part of uh, following Jesus and how investing into relationships is a critical part of faithfully following him? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll share two things with you. Uh, first of all, there's a biblical underpinning to all of this, which probably comes as no surprise to any of you that we follow the Bible, yeah, uh, and, and specifically, <laughs> <laughs> specifically the model of Jesus and the teaching of Jesus. Um, one of our, one of our uh, core verses that I come back to again and again and again is the great commandment. And I think lots of us in, in 21st century church uh, come back to this, this commandment, uh, when Jesus was asked, what is the most important commandment? He said, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and your, with all your strength. And he said, and love your neighbor as yourself. And um, what's interesting to me is in the New Living Translation of Mark chapter 12, which is one of the places we find this account, uh, the, the translation from the New Living says, the second commandment is as important as the first. Um, and, and the first time I read that in that translation, I thought, well, that's not what any of the other translations say. It just says the second commandment is. And so I went back to the Greek usage, and it turns out that the word Jesus chose to use uh, actually can be translated, the second commandment is the same as, or is as important as, or it, it, it's a very specific Greek word. And so I like that translation uh, 
because I think sometimes we can become so focused on our, our vertical relationship with God sure. and think that that's all that's really important in this life. But Jesus really taught and demonstrated and lived out in his ministry that the horizontal, our, our relationship with people around us is just as important. So I, we have that as a biblical value. But in addition to that, for me personally, um, I had uh, the value of, of relationships and, and Christian relationships in particular uh, became uh, demonstrated to me and, and I was invited into a community of relationships as a young adult. Mm -hmm. And uh, J Jake, you and I have a common friend, Jay Taylor. Who's been to uh, our church as a missionary, by the way. Yeah, so uh, Jay and I served uh, right out of out of when we both graduated from Northwest University. We served on the church, the same church staff in a large church in in Idaho, and uh, Jay had this value of community that that just just oozed out of his pores. Community, community, relationships, relationships, and and he and I uh, were close friends. And in fact, uh, he was the youth pastor. I was the music director, and. And as we began to develop a, a real close friendship and uh, partnership in ministry, mm -hmm. uh, we just began combining our ministries, e even in our jobs. Um, I was involved with youth. He was involved with our music productions. And, and we just began to rely on each other as brothers. It was, it was really an extraordinary thing. Um, and, and not long after that, we decided that we really wanted to live in community. And so we rented uh, connecting apartments in a fourplex unit. He and his wife lived in one unit. I lived in, in the upper unit and we shared meals together. Uh, they bought a washer, I bought a dryer, it saved money. But we really began to experiment with what does it mean to live in really radical community? Um, we we uh, ran discipleship groups, Bible study groups that were hardcore. I mean, we were investing in hours and hours of relationships in a small group and, and uh, holding one another accountable to daily disciplines and reading and prayer and all this kind of stuff. And those early experiences as a young adult really shaped my values and, and the way that I do ministry, uh, even to this day. Um, when, when my wife and I got married, I didn't get married till I was 31. Uh, so I had um, all of my 20s, I was, I was in ministry before we got married. But uh, Chris and I agreed when we got married that relationships and investing in relationships was something that we would devote our lives to. Mm -hmm. Both of us had been blessed by people who had welcomed us into their homes to live with them for long periods of time. And we felt like it was, uh, it, it was important for us to pay that forward. Mm -hmm. um, and so our entire, we've been married 25 years and over the years, we've just continually invited people into our home to live with us for long periods of time. And they've become family members with us. We have, we have children, re relationships that are like children, literally all over the world uh, that, that call us mom and dad. And uh, when they come home, they eat our food and, and live. I, I mean, uh, we've never had biological children, but we have birthed a family through significant uh, relationships and living in community our whole lives. I now I just I babbled, but um, <laughs> that's okay. It's good. But the value for us of community has really come not just from the teaching of Jesus, but from the people who have invested in us, and we are driven to pay that forward into the lives of the people that we know and the people that we love. Yeah. So, I mean, you look at the pattern of Jesus and you know, he not only taught this, but modeled it himself, you know, a man going around with 12 disciples, spending a lot of time doing a lot of stuff with them. And uh, what a powerful example he gave us in that as well. So I think it's clear. And I think most people would, would agree that 
you know, the Bible encourages these kinds of relationships, the investment into relationships. I think most people would say, you know, if they've experienced it themselves in their lives, hey, I've seen the value for this. So this is something that can be easy for us to talk about, but it's not so easy to live out all the time. We have it's all hard. kinds of excuses, I think, uh, for yeah. why we don't intentionally invest into relationships. So uh, in, in your experience, what do you think are some of the greatest challenges that people face in investing in relationships? And what are some of the ways you overcome those challenges? I think there's a lot of things that tempt us to procrastinate or, or just ignore the need for significant relationships in our life. Um, one of them is, is some people are introverts. Mm -hmm. And relationships are difficult for introverted people. When I take the personality assessments, I usually test out right on the borderline between an introvert and extrovert. And if I give in to my natural impulses, I will, I will skew to the introverted side. Sure. You know? And sometimes that personality trait that I have will, will cause me to shy away from really investing in relationships. And, and the way you overcome that is from being intentional. You make intentional choices that I'm going to go over and talk to that person, or I am going to sign up for a small group and I'm going to go as an act of discipline and I'm gonna overcome my, my shyness or my introversion. I'm going, going to overcome it on purpose. We, have to, we just have to be intentional about the way we live our lives. If this is really a Christian value and a Christian virtue, then sometimes it means we have to do things that are hard. Mm -hmm. An, another obstacle I think that we face is just all of the demands on our time. Yeah, sure. We're, we're busier now than we've ever been. Well, not now that we're in this coronavirus thing. <laughs> this is the first day I've worn clothes other than pajamas in a week, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, we're, we're so busy with work and school and recreation um, here, here in Bozeman, Montana, man, recreation takes a big chunk out of people's schedules. You know, there's skiing and snowmobiling and hiking and fishing, and we're right next to Yellowstone. I mean, people are always go, go, going, and it's really easy to let even uh, playtime, even family time can crowd out Christian community. You, you just have to make up your mind, this is my value, and I'm going to structure this into my life. Um, and overcome the impulse to avoid or procrastinate. You know, even procrastination can be a barrier mm -hmm. to investing in community. You have to, you have to choose. Yeah. So it's a, it's a matter of intentionality. I like uh, the word you use, discipline. And the reason I say that is because oftentimes in the Christian world, we'll talk about spiritual disciplines, things like read your Bible, pray. Um, what you're really talking about is relationships as a spiritual discipline. Is that something that, that you had taught to you growing up, or is that something you kind of just discovered along the way? I, I think it developed out of my young adult relationships with people that, that were modeling for this and inviting me into it. Absolutely. I, um, I, I was raised in a, in a church environment that was very vertically oriented. Well, now that, now that you asked me about this, my parents were very social. But as a, as a kid, grade school and even through high school, I personally was really isolated. And that maybe uh, drove me to the deep value of, of relationships that I have now because I was so isolated as a kid that, um, that as an adult, I was hungry for significant relationships. So um, I, I would say it developed in adulthood. Yeah. So you talk a lot about intentionality. You know, I, the image that came to my mind as you were talking about this is, you know, maybe you're not somebody who naturally goes to relationships like this, but it's kind of like eating your vegetables. You know, you know, it's good for you. You just got to, you got to make sure you do it. Um, have you found there to be any, whether in your life personally or as a pastor leading a church where this is a core value for you guys, have you found there to be any uh, things that you can do or, or ways that you can kind of encourage yourself to be intentional about investing in these relationships? Well, I, I think the biggest thing, I like that metaphor of like eating your vegetables, but one of the things that I've learned uh, in terms of eating good food is vegetables don't have to be nasty. You know, if, <laughs> yeah. 
there, there comes a point where you learn how to prepare vegetables that you find them delicious and inviting. And sometimes when I've got a well-prepared dish in front of me, I will choose the vegetables first because they're so delicious, right? And, and I think that when you learn the value of developing significant relationships, even if you're shy or, or whatever your obstacle is, there comes a point where you say, this is my favorite part of my week. Meeting with my small group and sharing and praying together is the best part of my week. Um, Chris and I for many years have hosted uh, a group for connectors. We call our church members connectors, uh, but we, we've hosted a small group in our home for people who are new to Connect Church. And it's always so awkward. The first three or four weeks are so awkward. And by the end of about 12 or 13 weeks, everybody is so, so afraid of what's going to happen when this group comes to an end because we've invested and we've, we've fallen in love with one another. Everybody is so excited to come together every week. And, and it's, it's like you're, you're learning the value. It's hard at first, but once you develop those relationships where you love one another, it's so deeply soul satisfying and, and it changes your life. If, if you've never had those kinds of relationships, it changes your life, but it takes time and investment and hard work to get to that point where, where the love is deep and significant and, and deeply satisfying. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, talking about that awkwardness, I think we all can relate to that. Um, and, and I've said before to, to people, uh, you know, when it comes to, to life groups or to connecting with people to those intentional in investments in relationships, I am one of those introverts. You're talking about that scale of introverts. So, you know, left to myself, I'll spend most of my time in my office or at home reading a book, you know, reading something on the computer, typing up a project. Uh, I've got to be very intentional about that. And one of the things I learned in that is you kind of got to embrace the awkwardness, uh, you know, and, and so that's led me to a phrase that I say every once in a while, just embrace the awkward, just, just go for it. You know, <laughs> it's not going to last forever. No, and it, it won't. If you'll persevere, these relationships will become deeply meaningful. Yeah, they will. Um, and I've seen that in my own life, uh, for sure. So, uh, you know, right now, obviously, we're in a unique season as a society. Um, we're kind of seeing these phrases and words in our everyday vocabulary now that weren't, you know, just a month ago, things like social distancing, uh, things like quarantine, all of those kinds of things, uh, plenty of restrictions being placed on gathering sizes, uh, all of those kinds of things are, are a very normal part of our life, at least for right now, uh, as we face the challenges with coronavirus. So what are some of the ways that you're encouraging people in your church, your connectors, or just others to invest in relationships and connect? as we navigate the challenges that we're facing right now. Yeah, well, this last Sunday, uh, in my Sunday message, I, I taught about this very thing, Jake, and we just rolled out a bunch of strategies for how we can connect without connecting. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm using the wrong word. We're calling it gathering without gathering. We have, a, we have a hashtag that's unique to Connect Church, hashtag gathering without gathering. And we're coming up with creative ways and, and I just shared some strategies with connectors about how we can gather without actually being in the same room with one another. So one of the strategies uh, that, that we shared was pick up your phone and have a conversation. In, in this concept, environment- Phones are for talking, right? What's that? <laughs> it's a novel concept. Phones are for talking on, huh? <laughs> well, we've, we've become so accustomed to texting and emailing and, you know, and this kind of stuff that it really keeps us distant from one another. So what I'm encouraging people to do is to make sure that every day you phone at least five people. Uh, one of my staff members shared yesterday that it took her two and a half hours to phone five people. <laughs> but that, that tells you how hungry we are, right, for, for connection. And so we can, we can go back to the old way of actually talking to people in this time of not being able to gather. Um, we're using Zoom like you and I are. We're using Zoom for small groups. Next week, uh, Connect Church is unveiling, we're calling them digital digging deeper groups. And they're, they're going to be groups that just use the technology of Zoom. And they're using the digging deeper questions that we provide every week for small groups. And they're just going to get together and have a small group experience without being in the same room. Um, of course, we're using our podcasts and live stream and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, 
and it's it's amazing to me uh, as I just watch on social media and I see our connectors using that hashtag, people are just coming up with creative ways of gathering without gathering. And uh, we can do this. And, and I think it's imperative. We, could, we can isolate during this season and really do damage to our spiritual health. Or we can be creative and find ways to connect. And, and I, I think we could actually grow spiritually during this time if we use this time strategically. Yeah, I love that idea. Um, we've been saying to our church, uh, you know, at this time and season, we may not be able to go to church, but this is the perfect time for us to be the church. Absolutely. And uh, so I love, I love that idea of, of what are we doing right now to see this as an opportunity. I really believe that what we're facing right now is an opportunity for us. Uh, you know, it's so easy to get accustomed to just Sunday morning gathering being the main driver of our spiritual lives. But I think right now we're in a season where we're having to think outside of that and it's not comfortable, but it's good for us in some ways. Yeah, Jake, I'll share with you at the first of the year, one of our elders had a prophetic word for our church that God was going to lead us to be a church without walls. Mm -hmm. And we've really fully embraced that. And we've been talking for weeks about what it looks like to be a church without walls. We had no idea that this would be how it would look. Sure. But, but now we're seeing that, that that was a strategic prophetic word that was spoken at Connect, preparing us, I think, for this season we're in. And we are going to be a church without walls. And I don't think that's just for Connect. I think that's for the church at large. This is a time for us to be the church. Yeah, that's so good. So, um, so in, that, in that mentality, in that mindset of, of trying to be the church, and that's really why we're hosting some of these Activate 605 things, is we're wanting to say, hey, let's activate uh, people in our communities uh, to be the church in these time frames. Uh, where we're just going through some interesting challenges and some different things, and we're adjusting to that uh, in activating ourselves and being the church in these time frames. Why do you think relationships are such a key part of being the church in this season? Well, Jesus said people would know that that we're His disciples by our love, right? Yeah. Not by what we believe. Um, one of the things that I've been studying the last six or eight months has been. Uh, Western Christians have become so belief focused, so cerebrally uh, focused that in a lot of our lives and a lot of our churches, we, we've lost this element of love that Jesus said was core to us. The core is love. And, and um, I, I believe that theology is important. I love theology. I love the Bible. But Jesus said that it, it centers around love, not about what you believe. And, and so I, I think that's why. I, for me, that, that's one of the driving forces is, is when you really study what Jesus said, it, it all comes back to love. Love, love, love. That's relationships. Yeah. And, and you can't do love absent relationships. Right. <laughs> it's just, it has to be relationships uh, that connect us to that. So uh, Pastor Russ, such a such a great concept and some ideas for us to think about as we're in this unique time. Uh, hopefully, social distancing for us isn't relationship distancing. Um, we're we're investing into those relationships all the more uh, as we're as we're in this unique time. Uh, thanks so much for taking some time to talk with us today. I'm wondering uh, if you'd be uh, willing to pray for us before we before we kind of sign off today. Absolutely, it's it's an honor. Thank you, Jake. Yeah. Um, Jesus, we're so thankful, uh, Lord, for so many things today. Um, this whole COVID-19 thing that we're all experiencing tempts us to, to withdraw and isolate. It tempts us to react to things in fear. But Jesus, you gave us a clear vision for how we encounter any kind of hardship in our lives. And it's by laying down our lives for our friends. It's by living in faith. It's by living a life full of love. And I want to pray for Pastor Jake and, and for the church that he leads. I, I want to pray, Lord, for the Christians in Peer, Lord, that you will fill them with this vision and ideas and strategies for how to love one another well, not just for this season, but beyond. Mm -hmm. I've been sensing in my spirit, Jesus, that 
we're going to come out of this experience changed. And one of the things that I pray that you will do as you change us is drive us deeper and deeper and deeper into the life of love with, with uh, our neighbors, not just other believers, but with all of the people around us. Help us to love well. Help us to build relationships. And Jesus, I pray that you will be at the center of those relationships. And we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor Russ, uh, since you're a, a new person to most in our church, if, uh, if people want to kind of check things out that you guys are doing at Connect or Connect with you in any way, how might they be able to do that? Uh, our website is connectchurch.app.app, um, and you can find us there. And on social media, our, our, um, our handle is connectchurchmt. Connectchurchmt. So, so I'd encourage you to check our stuff out. Absolutely. I'd encourage you guys to check them out and uh, just some good content that they have and, and a good person to be connecting with and voices to be listening to. Uh, Pastor Russ, again, thank you so much for being willing to give us some time today and uh, just an encouragement to all of us in this time and this season where we're uh, trying to figure out what life looks like and things are a lot different. Let's not forget to invest into relationships because that's a key and crucial part, uh, part of of following Jesus. And uh, as a church, we talk all the time about our mission of helping people find and follow Jesus. We can't and won't do that absent relationships. So let's take Pastor Russ's words to us as an encouragement. Let's make that a discipline. Let's make that a priority and an intentionality in our lives. And I believe as we do, God's just going to continue to grow the church and continue doing incredible things as we follow him. So thanks for coming in today, for watching. Uh, hopefully you're blessed by this. We've got more of these coming next week. We're going to be with Jeremy Weinmeister, uh, he's going to be talking to us about sharing Christ with others. Uh, if you were, if you've been with us for a couple months, Pastor Jeremy was with us in August, uh, sharing while I was gone at, dist or at General Council. So I uh, encourage you to check that out uh, on our YouTube page. You can watch his sermon there and get yourself ready for him to share with us next week. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next week. Have a great one.